first guest is a, not a first time visitor, but he's a long time visitor. New York Nick legend, my man, my mellow, Latrell Sprewell. What's going on, partner? What's going on, Cass? What's going on, Monica? How you guys doing today? Pretty good. I'm nah, feeling good, man. Another Knicks victory, but I feel I feel a lot better after this weekend. So, and that's definitely what I want to get into. The Knicks have two important games this weekend with the Charlotte Hornets and the Boston Celtics on Saturday and Sunday, and it's going to determine a lot as far as Eastern Conference seedings coming up in the playoffs next week. I got to know, first question off the bat, the Atlanta Hawks, the Miami Heat, they're looking pretty good. What do you think is the better matchup for the Knicks going forward if the standings stay the way they're supposed to? Hey, I, I'm thinking Atlanta. I'd rather see us go against uh, Atlanta. So, um, I mean, the Heat, you know, they, they're a very tough team. They're uh, Defensively, they have a lot of same concepts as the Knicks, so I think it'll be one of those grinded out things. They, they're more experienced. So, I just feel like we had a better shot at beating Atlanta. That's fair. I, I think the, the matchups, I agree. I definitely think you put Trey in, in the mix up there, and that favors this team. But, Spree, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Tonight, obviously, Alex, Bur Alex Burks returns, has a terrific ball game. In terms of finishing the rest of the regular season, what are the keys right now for this Knicks squad? Hey, you got two games left. Take them one at a time. Don't get ahead of yourself and start looking at the standings and stuff like that. I know Tibbs is going to have those guys ready for Saturday's game. It's a noon game. So guys just need to get their rest and stay focused. And like I said, take it one game at a time. And I think if they do that, they'll be fine. Um, it's nice to see Burks back. He came back. I think he had a uh, season high, if I'm not mistaken. So it's nice to see him back getting in the flow. I'm not sure if D. Rose is going to play. So it definitely, hopefully, he'll be out on the floor as well because we definitely need these last two games. Now, speaking of these last two games, uh, we finally came back off that long West Coast trip. Ooh. And the first thing that we saw was Julius Randle, Leon Rose, Lil Kaiden, and Kendra accepting that <laughs> NBA Player of the Month trophy. Talk to me about the New York Knicks' most valuable player, Julius Randle. Oh, man, he did it again tonight. He almost had a triple-double. I think he was one rebound and one assist away from another triple-double. I mean, what can you say about this kid this year? He's just been giving his all. And, um, I mean, the fans can – I mean, the, just the appreciation that you have to have for this guy and what he's done this season. I mean, it's just incredible. Being an all-star, I mean, player of the month, all the things he's done, all the energy he brings and his commitment uh, and practice after practice, getting there early. Doing all those things, leading these guys. I mean, what? I mean, you just can't stop raving about this guy with what he's done this year. Okay, Spree. Keeping all that you just said in mind, where does Julius fall in the All M? Mm, I keep messing this up because in my mind he's my MVP <laughs> in the All NBA discussion. <laughs> I think it's first team. You ask me, I'm a little biased, but I'm hoping he's talk to him, Spree. Talk to him, Spree. Some, uh, some MVP. He needs some MVP votes too, man. <laughs> I agree with that. Hey, I think he's first team. So, hey, let, let's let's keep our fingers crossed for that one. Now, now, speaking of MVP, obviously there's going to be some awards given out. Julius Randle's going to get a couple of those votes, but I'd like to know who do you think is the current leader in the NBA MVP race? Oh, that's a tough one, man. I like CP3, but uh, the Joker is balling now, too. So it's going to be a toss-up between those two in my mind. Um, it, it's a flip of the coin because they're both playing really well this year. So we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. I think a lot of it depends on what they do in the playoffs as well. You know, that vote um, really doesn't come out until maybe after round two or close to round three in the playoffs. So I think it, a lot of people are just waiting to see how those two guys finish the season and then go into the playoffs and what they do in the first couple of rounds in the playoffs. CP3 has jumped Joel for you already? N well, not already. Not, not, not for me. I mean, can, if, if, if I may... Uh I mean, we kind of knew the Phoenix Suns. You may. We kind of knew the Phoenix Suns were coming last year. I mean, they balled out in the bubble. Devin Booker is no scrub. All right, DeAndre Ayton was a number one overall pick. 
Chris Paul was like a little bit of the parsley on that Phoenix Suns entree, all right? Like, he's sprinkled a little bit on there. And listen, I'm just saying, Cam. Nikola Jokic. Parsley? Yeah, let's talk about Nikola Jokic, oh all right? This is somebody who hasn't missed many games, who lost an all NBA, an all star player in Jamal Murray, or a potential all star player in Jamal Murray. And I ain't gonna hold you. When New York was going into Denver red hot off of two big wins, I thought Julius Randle was going to give Nikola Jokic the the business, and we all kind of saw what happened. In my opinion, I think the dad bod god has locked up the MVP award. I'm sorry. No. Okay, wait. <laughs> no. Spree said the same thing. Spree had Joker and then CP3. I asked Spree, did he have CP3 over Joel? And that's, it sounds like... I would, with them being, nah, I would I'm say, a little bit spring, of spring, 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 go ahead. My fault, my fault. I, I, this gets me excited. <laughs> go ahead, Spring. It's, it's, a, it's a toss up, but I'm, I'm thinking, I, I mean, if I had to pick one, I'd pick, I'd pick the Joker for sure. I mean, it, it's close. I like CB3 and what he's yeah. been able to do, but the Joker's just been balling out. I mean, all the stuff that he does for that team, rebounding, assisting, and scoring. I mean, the guy shoots threes. I mean, he does it all for them, so I would give him a nine right now. I think we all agree on that. Uh, uh, yes, this is, we're yeah. all in the green. It's the dad bod god. Yes, MVP. Now let's talk yeah. about the MVPs that tend to usually matter around this time, which is Finals MVP and last year's Finals MVP. LeBron James is returning to the roster for the Los Angeles Lakers in the possible play-in tournament. They're the defending champion, Spree. Would love to get your thoughts on you know LeBron's addition to the Los Angeles Lakers and their chances at possibly repeating, even though he's already said himself, he doesn't feel like his ankle may ever get back to 100%. What are your thoughts? Hey, I, I think the Lakers will be fine. LeBron, you know, he's going to come out and play and does what he always do. That The high school spray is a tough one, though. I've had that injury before, so I know it's going to be difficult, but I know his training staff is going to do everything that they can to make sure he's healthy and ready to go. And just with the talent that the Lakers have, the experience and uh, and the commitment to winning that, that, that they always show, I, I think that they'll be fine. I'm pretty sure they'll get to maybe the second round. I, you never know after that, though. So I think they'll get out of the first round pretty easily. Hopefully they got the play-in game, which um, I'm feeling like they're going to, you know, play their way in and win the first round. And after that, um, you, you never you never know. But I think the Lakers are going to be fine. And if they do get put out, they're going to be a tough out. They just got too much talent, in my opinion. You know I really want a needle spree and get like specific answers, but we're gonna we're gonna let it live with they're gonna be fine because I want to get to this next topic spree because so many people that probably couldn't play past their high school basketball uh, team <laughs> had so much to say about Russell Westbrook and his triple double, the record that he broke early this week passing Oscar Robertson. Like, how can you not appreciate this spree? Please help me understand. Like, just. How difficult is this, Free The consistency is crazy. I cannot believe the way people are trying to disrespect this. Hey, I don't know where all that's coming from either. You know, I'm a huge Russ fan, so I I, I just don't understand it. The guy, he, he goes out every night, gives you 110%. I mean, and how difficult is it to get a triple-double in the NBA? I mean, come on, it's extremely difficult. And, I mean, he do, he's doing it all the time. He's, he averaged it, what, last year or so. It's, I mean, I can't even explain to you how hard it is to get a triple-double in the NBA. And, uh, like I said, he's just going out there, seems like he's doing it at will. So, I mean, I, I, I definitely appreciate it. And I don't know what all the fuss is and why all these other people are so upset about what he's doing. I'm, like he's the force of numbers and all this other stuff. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. But, but it, I, I like seeing them ball out like he's doing it. And, you know, kudos to Russ. <laughs> Kaz is distraught. Uh, Spree, you always drop a triple-double when you come through and hang out with us. So thank you for kicking it. <laughs> we can't wait to see you in the playoffs, baby. We got to make sure you're on the show in the playoffs. Ooh. Hey, we got to keep this record rolling, man. You do a big thing. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, coming up next, Kaz sits down with Giants head coach Joe Judge. Stick around. 